Hello everyone. On June the 3rd until July 20th, 2021, Mars is transiting in the sign of sidereal cancer. From this position, he is in a debilitated state and from here, he will be opposing directly a strong and retrograde Saturn and also agitating Jupiter in Aquarius. I have all the details what this will mean for the world and for yourself. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Let's begin. Let's look at the astrology, everybody. June the 3rd, 2021, Mars is at North Degrees Cancer, moving into his debilitated state. But his aspects from here are so potent. Mars, when he is in Cancer, is debilitated because the watery nature of Cancer, ruled by the moon, is not supporting Mars's martial agenda. Mars gets over-emotional and reactive in this position. So Mars is not quite himself in the sign of Cancer, that's for sure, but it doesn't make him any less powerful. He is able to still move ahead with his agenda, but he's often displaying a temper and a really over-emotional reaction that everybody will feel in some area of their life. But most importantly, of course, he is directly opposing Saturn, a retrograde and powerful Saturn on the video. I will discuss the meaning also of this retrogradation of Saturn in your life. Now, Saturn is especially powerful when he's retrograde. He's gained the strength to really make people stop and think about where they are going in their life. When Saturn turns backwards, everybody reflects. Saturn turns backwards, everybody rethinks what their goals are, what they are aiming for, because Saturn has everything to do with this side of life, the slow goal towards the future, the desire to structure our life. Saturn makes you stop, think, when he goes retrograde, and that can be useful. But when he's agitated so strongly by Mars, posing a lot of frustration and even fear can come into people's lives. The peak time for the Mars-Saturn opposition will be the beginning of July. The first week in July is when the Mars shiny anger, frustration, difficulty, everything becomes a battle in your life in the beginning of July. Take it easy at that time. In addition, Mars has the eighth aspect on Jupiter in Aquarius. Now, Jupiter in Aquarius is what's keeping us connecting to other people, wanting to cooperate, as I've been talking about this transit on my recent videos. Mars agitating Jupiter here means everybody's keen to get out and about, meet people, socialize where they can in the world with COVID restrictions easing. But it won't go straight forward because the eighth aspect of Mars is going to indicate many stops and starts in this easing of restrictions. Mars in Cancer, of course, in the wider world will influence all the industry ruled by the sign of Cancer. This is mostly hotel industry, hospitality, restaurants, eateries, etc., etc. Wherever there is hospitality, Cancer is involved. And Mars in Cancer in a debilitated state gives a lot of action there, but frustrated by Saturn. So once again, reopening after COVID restrictions is going to be a little bit dynamic to say the least with many stops and starts and quite a bit of frustration. Finally, please take note, everyone, that the dispositor of Mars in Cancer, who in the end will decide everything about the transit, the Lord of Cancer, the Moon, will be involved in a few days after this date in a solar eclipse when the Moon enters Taurus, conjuncting Rahu and the Sun and indeed Mercury. This June the 10th solar eclipse is very important because the factors that come to the fore then, the feeling that you have to lock the door to the past will have everything to do with how you experience the emotionality of this Mars Cancer transit. Check out the video on my channel, Solar Eclipse, June the 10th. I will link below and at the end of the video. Let's consider now the Mahadasha impact. Don't forget, your Mahadasha is your destiny in life and every transit is only part of that destiny. So which Mahadashas are most impacted by Mars in Cancer this time? It's of course Mars Mahadasha, Shani Mahadasha and definitely the Moon. So if you're in Mars Mahadasha, once again, your life is shifting 
on the bumpy seven road ride of Mars Mahadasha. It's a bit of a down phase though because Mars becomes debilitated. Watch emotions, watch your temper and don't take any fast action during these next seven weeks. Shani Mahadasha period, the next seven weeks will put you in an agitated mood because Mars is agitating Saturn. You will feel like everybody's getting to you and you, and you have to keep on making quick assessments of changing volatile situations. Stay calm because Saturn is now going backwards. That's a good thing. In a Mahadasha, when that Lord goes backwards, it gives you time to reassess. So use this time. Saturn Mahadasha people take things extra slow. Moon Mahadasha people, you're feeling agitated and even a little powerless. Why? Because Mars is in the sign of the moon and the moon is part of a solar eclipse on June the 10th because the solar eclipse is a eclipse of the sun and the moon together, darkening everything. So you don't know what to do next. You're feeling in the dark right now. Hold tight because as this solar eclipse energy fades away, you will regain your power. Just take it easy not to make precipitous moves and emotionally agitated moves in the next few weeks and everything will be fine. Let's move on now to the readings from your moon and ascendant sign. Always read for both to get the deepest understanding. For Aries Moon and Aries Lagna, both Mars is your Lord. Going into a debilitated state during this transit is going to agitate you. Right away, I'd say this is a month you're going to need a chill pill. You're going to need some way to let off steam Aries because it's going to be coming out from both ears almost constantly, I promise you. So listen, what's happening is Mars is now in a quadrant house, very powerful in your chart, fourth house, aspecting your seventh house of relationships, business, tenth house career and eleventh house of your friendships, network circles and your gain. This month, Mars puts all the energy into your fourth house of home. There can be disputes with your family, disputes in your domestic circle. Mars doesn't like to be in this fourth house. He feels contained and that's how you will be feeling. Like you want to change everything, maybe move, maybe make dramatic changes, but you're frustrated all the way because Saturn is challenging Mars. Because of Mars's dominant position in this fourth house, as I say, where he's not feeling too happy, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on your spouse or you will feel as though you have to put pressure on your spouse to get things moving on your girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, friendships. You are just acting out in a very strong way and it's going to get people's back up a little sometimes. Or you will just find tension developing in your relationships that makes you feel ill at ease during this time. Even with your superiors and your boss and your friendship network, there's quite a lot of tension in your relationships in these next seven weeks. Of course, Aries, what's really causing you frustration here is not other people so much as the roadblocks to your career and your profession and your public life because Shani is there powerfully retrograding now in your 10th house up until October. It's going to frustrate you, but for a good reason. You need to take stock of where you are going career-wise now. Saturn retrograde in your 10th house is not easy for you at all because Mars ruled people want to move forward fast and Saturn is going backwards, frustrating you tremendously. You will feel as though everybody in your workplace is conspiring to work against you, but that's not the case. You need to be very patient. It's not easy for you, but you need to see that some doors are just never going to open to you and that the right door will open in time. When? When Jupiter goes retrograde into your 10th house, as I've spoken about many times in the autumn period, September, October, November, and he conjuncts with Shani. That's the time when you will find the right doors opening to you career-wise. So you have to put up with quite a bit of frustration in your career at this time. But the good news is that Mars aspect on the 11th house 
where Jupiter is right now could be favourable. Extra sources of income, extra sources of gain and good financial deals can actually still be yours in these next seven weeks. For Taurus Moon and Taurus Lagna, Mars, Lord of your 12th house and 7th house, is a difficult planet for you sometimes to integrate because he demands a lot of action from you and you like to take things easy, right? Well, now he's gone into your 3rd house of action and he's very happy to be here. Never mind, he is debilitated. He's still going to work well for you. He's aspecting your 6th house of enemies, conflict and health. Your ninth house of education, father, good gurus and your 10th house of career. The first thing Mars will do for you is by aspecting your 6th house, he will destroy some of your health concerns. He will absolutely get on top of them now. You will get good diagnosis in these next 7 weeks. You will find out something you mightn't have known before, but it will put you in the driving seat to absolutely find a cure. You will change your diet. You will make whatever changes you have to make to get on top of health issues and it will be very successful. You will also get on top of conflicts, litigations and come out a winner in these weeks. But conflicts with your father or your father's family are ongoing and can be very sensitive still. If you are in education, conflicts with your teachers, advisors are also there and even with a guru, there can be difficult discussions for some of you. What's happening is you're becoming extremely vocal and willful and sometimes it's going to cause disturbances. Now Saturn's retrograde transit happening in your ninth house is actually very good for Taurus. Why? Well, first of all, Saturn is your yoga karaka. Yoga karaka going retrograde is very good indeed because it gives you extra time and extra power because he has gained enormous power. So you gain that power as well. So you like to take your time over making decisions, thinking things through. You actually enjoy that luxury of time. So Saturn rules time. He's gone retrograde. He's giving you the space to contemplate what matters to you in life. It's a very favorable thing up until October. You have the power now to take time to think, do I really believe in these values anymore? What are my true values in life? Ninth house factors. What am I aiming for in life? Do I want to be abroad? Do I want to be at home? Ninth house is foreign lands. Who is my true guru? Who is my true helpmate? And to revise relationships maybe with your father also. So it's a very auspicious retrograde transit for you. If you are in higher education, however, Mars agitating here can cause you some distress when you are, you are feeling pressured to make a sudden decision. Try to hold on if you can because Saturn retrograde will give you good advice from other people that may help you to make a final decision. And also try to avoid quarrels with your brothers at this time, or with your father at this time. They are all unnecessary and simply need a little bit more patience from yourself because ultimately you're in a very powerful place in this transit. And avoid travel as well because Mars agitating Saturn in the ninth house means that foreign travel, particularly at the beginning of July, will be frustrating and a bit difficult for you. The best thing is though, Mars 8th aspect on the 10th house can give you great power in your career. Yes, there may be a bit of conflict in the workplace with your superiors, but still by applying yourself, you get noticed and make enormous progress in your work at this time. Gemini Moon, Gemini Lagna. Mars going into your second house actually puts a lot of pressure back on you. Why? Because Mars in your second and an eclipse in your 12th is hemming both your moon and your ascendant. During these next seven weeks, watch your speech with Mars in the second house. You're going to be quite volatile and you're going to set people off without even half knowing that you're doing it, particularly family members and children and even business colleagues. Also, relationship with your father comes under some stress in this seven-week period. 
As I say, what's happening is that you are feeling hemmed by this planetary configuration here and you're just trying to break free. But your financial situation needs sorting and you're going to take rash action sometimes because Mars can be a tricky planet for you. Be careful that you don't jump out of the frying pan, as they say, into the fire financially. Take advice of people who can help you when you are doing financial planning at this time. Don't do anything rash, particularly with finances which are shared with your spouse or business partnerships because you are very inclined to just make snap decisions which can be very difficult long term during these next seven weeks. If you are in education, Mars aspecting the fifth house and the ninth house of higher education is going to put you into conflict with your course leaders and with your whole goal focus in your education. You become impulsive and rash. So take advice again before you make things worse for yourself with dramatic changes in your educational course. Now, during this period, of course, Shani is retrograde in your eighth house. A different interpretation is from the moon and ascendant in Gemini. Important to understand. From your moon in Gemini, it's your Astam Shani, two and a half year difficult transit of Saturn in the eighth from the moon. But Saturn retrograde is good for you from your moon because it gives you a break from health concerns, stresses, even litigations. Some of you, it's helpful. You can reassess, gain health advice and you feel a little less stressed. So that's a good thing. From your ascendant though, Saturn retrograde in your eighth house causes you to worry unnecessarily, particularly about financial concerns, family matters, wills, legacies, inheritances. All of these things seem out of your control and you feel at a loss. But everybody should be aware that actually when Mars moves into your third house, for your Gemini moon and ascendant, you'll feel a lot happier, a lot less stuck and travel and more excitement and freedom from concern comes into everybody's life from the end of July. Cancer moon and Cancer lagna. Mars in the first house has a different indication according to whether it's your moon or ascendant in your case. It's very important. From the ascendant, it's actually quite favorable. It gives you a a great deal of push and motivation in these next seven weeks. But from your moon, you have to take caution. Mars in the same sign as your moon makes you impulsive, rash. There can be accidents, mishaps. There can be all sorts of quarrels, contentions with your family and even partner. You have to take great care in these next seven weeks. The good news for both Lagna and Moon, though, is that Mars energizes you in the first house. Mars is a good planet for you. He's your fifth house lord. He gives you energy, creativity and purpose. So the issue is, of course, is everybody on board with your plans? It looks like probably not because Mars is having a fourth aspect onto your fourth house of home. There's a lot of contention in your domestic situation with your mother, maybe with your family in your actual living space. But here's the thing, you are the mover and shaker. People will have to go along with your ideas in the home space. And some of you may even be thinking about domestic moves now. But the biggest issue is that Shani, who is a difficult planet for you many times, is opposing Mars from your seventh house. Retrograde Saturn here means that partners are having second thoughts about going along with some of your plans. People who you are close to even, close friends for some of you business partners are not going ahead with what they've said they would do. People are retracting on contracts, etc. It's making you totally frustrated. So you feel as though you just can't rely on other people in these next few weeks. You're all out, though, to make big changes because Mars aspecting Jupiter in your eighth house makes you very expansive. You want to take the money out of the bank, invest. You want to do something completely different, take a risk. But other people are just not backing you. What's the best thing for you to do then? Put your energy into your own fitness, into your own health and well-being. Planning for the future without maybe talking about it too much because bringing out so much conflict 
with this Saturn is not going to help you. But what about Saturn retrograde in your seventh house up until October? Is it good or bad? It's actually a bit of both. First of all, it does create conflict with your spouse, with your partners, with your business partners, because there is a lack of open communication now that Saturn has gone retrograde. There's a little bit of tension there. But the good news is, if you make time to have those deep conversations with your significant others, a great deal of interesting information comes out and you are able to make good plans again. You see, Saturn in the seventh house makes you serious about relationships now. You want to make them work and Saturn will absolutely help you to do so. But they have to be serious relationships. You're not interested in romance just for its, for its own sake now. You're not interested in fleeting, passing, casual relationships. You want long-term permanent commitment. So Saturn Retrograde gives you time to think about what your current relationships are actually offering you. For Leo Moon and Leo Lagna, Mars going into your 12th house is a tricky seven weeks for you. Take great care. Mars is definitely a good planet for you, though. He's your ninth house lord. So ultimately, with caution, you can gain tremendous insights into many factors in your life during the next few weeks. Mars 12th house for you, because he is your fourth house lord, can affect your health. You feel low energy, even a level of exhaustion. You can have digestive issues and all sorts of unexpected health factors come up, mainly though because you're extremely stressed and worried. Watch for anxiety, depression and a general feeling that things are just not inside your control. But the good factor is Mars helps you put aside desire to control everything by just letting things go, trying meditation, some form of maybe yoga practice could be excellent with this Mars 12th house because Mars is an active factor. You can actually improve your health, but you have to let go of trying to control everything in the next few weeks because Mars 12th house doesn't have that sort of control. At the end of July, Mars goes into your first house and everything will shift dramatically. The aspects of Mars give you a lot of challenge in your local environment. Problems with your neighbours, problems with your immediate family, particularly siblings. You're going to have to take a lot of care of your health, as I say, during this time. But litigation, conflicts, all of these factors are not going to go your way in the next six weeks, if you can avoid them. But most important of all, Mars is eighth aspect on the seventh house of spouse and, of course, business partnerships. It's going to be difficult because you need to come out and clearly say what's on your mind. But Mars in this house makes you a bit secretive. So tensions with your spouse, tensions in all business relationships become really strong in this period. So basically, if you can avoid confrontation with others during this seven week period, please do so. Keeping your own counsel is probably the best way forward when Mars is in your 12th house. But ultimately, soon enough, at the end of July, Mars into your first house will have those difficult conversations right out in the open and you'll be feeling much more positive. What about Saturn retrograde now up until October in your sixth house? It's again quite good for you because Saturn sixth house from your moon and ascendant is potently good for you. You are taking a back seat right now, but it's a necessary break from ongoing conflicts and health issues, as I say. You need to watch your health, certainly now that Mars is in your 12th house, but ultimately Saturn 6th house is good long term for your health. So having time out now, having rest, relaxation, not letting yourself push ahead with conflicts, work concerns, just not getting involved in things up until October is actually going to strengthen you from your moon and ascendant. And then, of course, when Jupiter makes that final conjunction with Shani in your sixth house, 
All of those conflicts come to a definite resolution. For Virgo Moon and Virgo Lag, now this is a very favourable transit for you. Mars in the 11th house is good for Ascendant and Moon, but especially auspicious from the Moon. Because what's happening is you are now able to push ahead with what you've wanted to start for so long. Doors are just opening. You have the energy and the confidence now to change the things you've wanted to change for some time. New job interviews go well. Colleagues support you. Work colleagues are definitely on your side. And more than that, you get rid of many frustrations in your life in these next few weeks. The first thing is you sort out your difficult financial situation. You make the changes you've been wanting to make for some time. You do something daring financially that will definitely work. Many of you have increase in income anyway at this time. And Honest conversations with your family members help you during these weeks. Mars is, of course, opposed to Saturn, now going retrograde in your fifth house. Retrograde Saturn for Virgo is a blessing. Virgo needs time to think out everything. You're a perfectionist. When Saturn goes retrograde, you sigh relief because you've got more time to pick over all the details. What details do you need to, to pick over? This will, by the way, be going on all the way up until the autumn. You'll be very pleased to hear you've lots of time to make important decisions. First, about family, children, starting a family. Secondly, about children's education and your education. You get more information so you can absolutely make right choice. Many of you are changing education, of course, making big decisions and having that, that extra time with this Saturn retrograde is a blessing for you. So you're one of the signs that actually benefits when Shani goes retrograde. Mars is Eighth aspect onto your sixth house also helps your health. You have honest conversations with health providers. You make decisions about fitness, diet that are very helpful in these next few weeks. For Libra Moon and Libra Lagna, both Mars in the 10th house is a stress for you, but ultimately a success for you as well. Mars is your 7th house lord and he always brings out your cooperative nature, although in a rather active way. So you want to cooperate, that's your innate nature. But in your workplace, you've got to go it alone now. But this is going to be very successful indeed. You have to take a lot of initiative do things off your own back in these next six weeks. If you are self-employed or in business, it's very good for you. Great opportunities, particularly even for starting a new business partnership. But here's the thing, of course, Mars is opposing Saturn all the way during this 10th house transit. The amount of time you have to spend at work, in your business dealings, etc., takes you away from your home family life. And there's a real conflict of home life and work life that is going to cause you some distress in the next seven weeks. But you have to put your energy into your working life now because the opportunities are there only with concentrated effort, which you have to give into this area in the next seven weeks. Yes, there is competition. Yes, there is conflict. Even superiors may become a little bit heavy on you if you are employed. But by putting in 100%, you will get yourself noticed. And long term, it's a very favourable opportunity for you. Mars's fourth aspect onto the first house is really helpful. You get your fitness into gear now. You put energy into your own health and your own agenda. And this is superb. Mars's eighth aspect onto the fifth house gets honest communication with your children. Some of you take up a brand new educational opportunity now and it's going to be long term extremely favourable. Many of you even start a family in these next few weeks. Now, what about Saturn's retrograde transit in your fourth house for moon and ascendant? Well, from your moon is slightly different because you're in what's known as Saturn Dyer going right on until 2023. Check the video, Saturn in Capricorn up until that time. It's 
already on my channel. Here's the thing, Saturn retrograde seems to increase your worry about home life, public reputation. There's so many stresses coming on you because retrograde Saturn brings up things that have happened in the past. The past comes back to haunt you if you have Moon Libra. But don't forget, this is a temporary factor. Saturn will cool out a little bit, chill out a little bit when he goes forward again and conjuncts with Jupiter in October, November. You will sort out these difficult factors by then. So if it's your ascendant though, it's not so troublesome. Saturn retrograde fourth house gives a little bit of a break from domestic pressures, domestic hassles for you at this time, but they still have to be sorted and final decisions have to be made in the autumn period. For Scorpio, Moon and Lagna, Mars is your law, but also lord of your sixth house of conflicts, litigation, health issues. Going into your ninth house, there can be stresses in your job because he's in the twelfth house from your career. So a very stressful seven weeks in your workplace. Everything's going out of your control and you don't like that at all. You're going to have quite a lot of mental stress also, mental worry in this time. It's very important that you take refuge of your spirituality. Mars has a very good aspect to your 12th house. So occult study, spirituality and refuge, retreat are very good if you can find time for that at this time. But Mars 9th house brings you into conflict with your teachers, with your gurus, with your father. You get into so much conflict in this next seven weeks. Seven weeks. What's the best way out of this rather stressful, tense time for you, Scorpio? Put effort into your domestic life. Your Lord having an aspect onto Jupiter in your fourth house. Make the changes you want to make in your home life. They should take up so much energy that all of this workplace stress won't even bother you anymore. Watch travel though at this time. Mars in the ninth house makes you want to travel, gives you itchy feet major time. But opposing Saturn in your third house is going to be endless delays, frustrations, particularly at the beginning of July. Try to not travel at that time. What about Saturn retrograde now in the third house of your chart? Is it good for you? Basically, it is. Saturn gives you time to go over conflicts with your brothers, family members and sort them out finally by October. The only problem is it will delay travel plans for many of you from your moon and ascendant. So travel movement becomes conflictual in your life up until October. For Sagittarius Moon and Lagna, Mars is a bit of a difficult planet for you when he goes into the 8th house. Although he is generally favourable for you because after all he is your 5th house lord. But in the 8th house he causes you to take risks financially which you must avoid at all costs. Mars here can give difficulties in business dealings, in partnerships and in joint finances with your spouse. Family issues come to the fore, contention over wills, legacies, litigation. All of this is very draining on your energy during this time. But the good news is Mars's fourth aspect on the 11th house, friends support you. You get so much support from your friendship circle. You can even find source of, of extra income at this time, but you must be open about it. Mars here makes you very secretive at this time. Take care of your health, Sagittarius, Moon and Lagna also because Mars in the 8th house can sometimes make you a bit clumsy. You can have accidents and mishaps. But also, most importantly, you're not taking care of your diet at this time. Mars aspecting the 2nd house where Saturn is and you need to do that as it can be impacting your health negatively. The Saturn retrograde, of course, right up until October affects you internally and mentally. It makes you feel a little bit insecure, particularly about your financial security, 
bank balance, etc., and family concerns. This is because Saturn retrograde means that things cannot be finalized until October, November. At that time, Jupiter, your Lord, conjuncts finally with Shani for the last Saturn Jupiter conjunction, and that will finally resolve difficult financial concerns family matters and for many of you health concerns also become resolved at that time for capricorn moon and capricorn lagna both mars is the lord of your fourth house of home and your eleventh house of gains but going into your seventh house it's very tricky because he directly opposes either ascendant or moon sign particularly from your moon sign it's going to make you quite emotional during these next seven weeks. It's like everybody is opposing you. You see, Mars is your 11th house lord. So friendship circles, network circles, close friends, partners, even family members, because Mars is aspecting family, seem to be contending with you. And it's so easy to get into disputes. Watch your health. Watch your partner's health as well. There can be a lot of discord because mainly people aren't feeling 100% in these next six weeks. What you have to watch particularly though is business deals. Mars seventh house is not favorable for signing documents and making business deals. Mars is contentious here. You're a very canny business person, but watch every line of everything that you sign in these next few weeks. Mars's fourth aspect of control, wanting to take things in your own hands, is coming into the 10th house of Korea. But in doing this, in pushing your own way forward, you're going to come into conflict with superiors, bosses, even co-workers in this next six weeks. It's going to be really difficult to avoid some form of open conflict at this time. And you don't enjoy that at all. The way to get through the next six weeks or seven weeks is to try to make peace with everybody, even though you feel frustrated mightily. Why? Because Mars opposes Shani, your Lord, in your first house, who has now just gone retrograde. Saturn retrograde as your lord in the first house is very important. From your moon, you're in Sadi Sati. And when Saturn goes retrograde in Sadi Sati, it's a good thing because you get time to reflect on the difficulties and the stresses you've been going through. You have time to reformulate your plans and you will make very good decisions between now and October that are going to put you in the driving seat as you move forward. You see, Sadi Sati always puts pressure on you, but there can be really good achievement. Check my video, Sadi Sati, it's on my channel. So with Mars opposing this retrograde Saturn, though these next few weeks are very difficult. You feel with your moon here that, as I say, people are conspiring against you. Hold tight because retrograde Saturn is going to increase your intuition and you will make the best decisions ever with this retrograde Saturn. Capricorns like time to think and your Lord retrograde gives you that time. But if it's your ascendant, it will frustrate you. Health issues come up. You feel really as though you just cannot make any progress whatsoever between now and October. So take it easy. De-stress yourself if you have Saturn rising and sorry, Capricorn rising and Saturn is retrograde. So you will feel it far more as a negative factor than moon Capricorn will do. But for all of you, look forward to Jupiter coming back into your sign in September, because at that time, you will make the final big decision about your life in every area, because that Jupiter Saturn conjunction is going to be momentous. Check the video, Jupiter transit already up on my channel. Aquarius moon and Lagna Mars is your third house lord and going into another Upachaya house you're getting on top of all your problems and you're coming out a definite winner 
in these next few weeks. Mars is also your 10th house lord, so you're going into the limelight as you push ahead in your workplace. Co-workers are supporting you. Boss is impressed with you. Everybody is seeing that you are someone who gets on with the job 100%. It's a great seven weeks for progress in your career and in your workplace. Mars in your sixth house helps your health. You find the right medication, right treatment. You find good consultation and you take swift action to completely eradicate health issues. So take that dramatic action which needs to happen and your health will certainly benefit. If you are in education, Mars's fourth aspect on the ninth house of higher studies gives you a great deal of energy towards your studies and you should get success but watch for a certain amount of conflict so with your teachers and mentors at this time you are extremely willful but it should work out because Mars six house gives you that cutting edge to make right decisions so education should go well the only issue of course is that Mars is now opposing your own Lord Saturn retrograde in your 12th house what does this mean the 12th house, of course, is a house of many secrets and it's a house of your subconscious mind. Your Lord going retrograde here is going to increase your intuition megafold. You're going to get so many insights into your true purpose in life between now and October. Go into spiritual retreat. Go abroad. Take time out. It's definitely a great time for foreign travel for many of you. Saturn retrograde in your 12th house also helps you to leave the past behind. You do whatever is necessary between now and October to come to some conclusions about past factors in your life. 12th house is always about letting go and this is your Lord itself. So this is a period in your life, Saturn Capricorn, when you have to let go of so many past factors and this retrograde motion helps you to finally release mental hold on these worrying and draining aspects of your life. Saturn 12th house of course is going to increase expenses mega time when he goes retrograde as well. That's the one negative factor but again you're heading for a whole new destiny soon in the next two years when Saturn goes into your own sign Aquarius from 2023. Cut your losses financially. You will make up for them in time, most definitely. For Pisces, Moon and Lagna, Mars is Lord of your second house of finance and your ninth house of higher learning, father and of course religious factors. Going into your fifth house is a little bit conflicting for Mars for you because what tends to happen is you tend to become a little looser in your morals. You don't become as strict about your high ethics and this can get you into some difficult corners, some of you. You can have conflicts with your children, particularly male children, and this can definitely cause you some distress. And you must watch your health because Mars is now in the 12th house to the 6th house of health. Watch your food intake. Mars is your 2nd house lord. You can be eating very unwise food choices in these next few weeks. So you have to take care of that. Mars can actually drain energy from you. So you need to take sufficient rest in this time. Mars is making a fourth aspect to the eighth house. Watch for financial loss, expenditure going right out of control. Why? Because Mars also has an eighth aspect on your 12th house of expenses. You're going to be spending far more than you ever thought you were and money is just slipping through your fingers. Try to take control of this before it just gets completely out of control. But Mars's seventh aspect is very important indeed. You have fortunate Shani in your 11th house for some time now and it's a very good placement because it's putting you on the right path for new earnings, career success and all sorts of gains and of course good long-term friendships also. But Mars opposing 
put these under the stress for a little bit of time. Avoid contention with your friends. Avoid setting people off and becoming a little bit opinionated because it just won't work out for you at this time. Although you are making good financial gains in your life, slowly now Mars can put these at risk through speculation. Speculation won't work because Saturn is retrograde now in this 11th house. And Saturn, don't forget, is your 12th house lord of loss. So avoid speculation at all cost during this time. But Saturn's retrograde phase in your 11th house is once again good for you because you need time to reflect. Who are your true friends? Who are supporting you? You've lost friends, many of you, in these last years because Saturn has that effect in your 11th house. That's because they're not on the same wavelength. They're not good for you anymore. You need to reflect on what matters to you. You need to be honest, open, completely transparent with your friends and important information conversations with them will absolutely happen between now and October. Most of all though Saturn retrograde 11th house will open you up to information about lucrative new financial deals, job opportunities, chances for promotion. They will all become obvious to you between now and October but you won't be able to make a move on them until your Lord Jupiter goes back from your 12th house to meet Shani in the 11th house. I've said this many times, September, October, November, you will sign the line. You will make that big deal that makes all the difference to you. Many future gains come from this. So it's something to be absolutely looking forward to. Check out the information about the solar eclipse on your screen right now on June the 10th and also Saturn right up until 2023 as he progresses through the sign of Capricorn. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.